This is part 31 of AngularCRUD tutorial. In this video, we will discuss creating a new employee using the create employee form. This is continuation to part 30. So please watch part 30 before proceeding. And here is what we want to do. Using our create employee form, we want to provide the information of the new employee that we want to create. And once we click the save button, we want to add this new employee to the list of employees that we have and then redirect the user to this list page where we can see that newly added employee. At the moment, we are on the list route and as you can see, we've got three employee objects here. And if you recollect from our previous video, these three employee objects are coming from our employee service. Notice within this employee service, we've got this private field list employees which has got those three employee objects. In addition to this private field, we also have this get employees method and this method returns that list of employees and then our list employees component is calling that method and that's how we see the list of employees right here. Now when we add a new employee using this create employee form, we want to add that employee to this private field within our employee service. So for that, let's go ahead and create a save method and this method is going to receive that new employee object that we want to add and obviously the type of this object is going to be employee. Now all we want this method to do is push this employee object into this private array that we have. So this push method pushes the employee object to the array. At the moment, all our employees data is within this employee service. This means when we refresh the browser, we are going to lose the new employees that we have added. In our upcoming videos in the series, we will discuss persisting this employees data to a database table. Now when we click this save button on our create employee form, we want to call the save method in our employee service. So let's open our create employee component and then import our employee service. In addition to this employee service, we also need Angular's router service. Remember, after we save the new employee, we don't want to be on this create route. We want to redirect the user to the list route so we can see that newly added employee. So to redirect the user to the list route, we are going to make use of the router service navigate method. So let's import Angular router service from the Angular router package. Next, let's inject both these services, employee service and Angular's router service into this create employee component using its constructor. The constructor is right here. So let's create a private field for our service. I'm going to name it underscore employee service. The type of this is employee service. Now let's create a private field for the Angular's router service. I'm going to name it underscore router and the type of this is router. Finally, let's modify the save employee method within our component. So the save employee method is right here. Now there is no need to pass the new employee object that we want to save as a parameter to this save employee method. That's because the model for this create employee component is this employee object. And notice at the moment all the properties are initialized to null. So whenever we type the values within these form fields, Angular's two-way data binding is going to keep the values that we type within the form fields and the values in these properties in sync. So we already have the employee object that we want to save available within our component class. So there is no need to pass that object as a parameter to the save employee method from the view template. So let's go ahead and delete this parameter. This method is already bound to ng submit event within our view template. So when we submit the form, we are calling the save employee method and passing it the employee object that we want to save. Now there is no need to pass this employee object because it's already available within our component class. So let's remove that. So all that is left to do is save the new employee and redirect the user to the list route. To save the new employee, we are going to make use of the employee service that we have injected and on the service, let's call the save method and to that, let's pass the employee model object that we want to save. 
and then let's use the injected router service and then use its navigate method to navigate to the list route. So the route that we want to navigate is list. Let's save all these changes and then take a quick look at the browser. Now let's provide the details of the new employee that we want to save. And then click the save button. Notice how our new employee is saved and we are redirected and we see our new employee Robert right here. Now if you take a close look at this data, there is a small inconsistency here. Notice the department of this new employee that we just added. We are showing the department ID and look at the existing employees. We are showing the department name. The reason we have this inconsistency is because for the existing employees within the department property, we are storing the department name and for the new employee, we are storing the department ID. Now let's go ahead and fix this existing data. Our existing employees data is in the employee service in this private field list employees. Notice at the moment we have the department name instead of the department name. Let's include department ID. To get the department ID, let's look at the department object within our create employee component. So here we have the department names and department IDs. Notice for HR it is 2 and for ID it is 3. So let's change the department property in each of the objects. Notice now we only see our three existing employees. What happened to the new employee that we have just added? Well, that's because at the moment we are not storing this employee's data to a database table. We are only storing it in memory in our employee service. So this means when the application restarts, all our new employees will be lost. Now, if you're wondering why did our application restart? Well, that's because when we made the department changes within our employee service and when we saved those changes, since our application server is running in watch mode, it automatically restarted and as a result, we lost the new employee that we just added. In our upcoming videos in this series, we will discuss saving this employee's data to a database table. When saving data, storing department ID is fine, but when we display the data to the end user, this department ID does not make any sense to him. So we should actually be displaying the department name instead of department ID. We'll discuss how to fix this in our next video. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.